Hey guys, Dr. Ken Nordberg here again. <laughs> Out in the woods in my backyard here and uh, bringing another uh, uh, whitetail buck hunting seminar. Uh, and this one is a nitty gritty addition to uh, what you need to know about ground scrapes. Now, ground scrapes. <laughs> you know, I've mentioned it before. With all the deer signs in the woods, Ground scrapes are the least understood of deer signs. Uh, there's so many, there's so many myths and untruths about ground scrapes that have existed for years, and hunters swear by these myths and untruths, and and as a result, actually reduce their chances of taking a big buck. I kind of mentioned that when I was talking about antler rubs, you know. Uh, like, for example, at the same time that bucks, this frenzy of making antler rubs is going on, they're also making ground scrapes. And uh, I've talked to you about that. You know, when a buck makes a ground scrape, he'll paw the ground, get rid of the grass, you know, all the compound leaves, uh, turf, bear some soil, a patch of soil. Uh, first time he does it, you know, like in mid. October, you get this cooler temperature at night. Uh, it might start out kind of small, maybe only a foot or so in diameter. I see them even just eight inches. One of the things that distinguishes the ground scrape by, of a really big buck at this point is that that turf that he pawed is way over there, <laughs> about 10, maybe even 20 feet away. He just really goes at it. This guy is, you know, he's really showing his temper. Uh, and these other bucks are really bothering him. Boy, I'm not messing around anymore. You know, just paw that turf and that moss and leaves way over there, usually in one direction. <laughs> and there, now he's got it all bared there. Next thing he'll do is he'll step into it with all four feet. They're all together, you know. It's like he's standing in a pail <laughs> with all four feet together, or hooks together. And then the tarsal glands inside his hind legs, he'll press his hind legs together. And, and he's squeezing out a tarsal musk. It's kind of a, another syrupy-like liquid, you know, containing all this musk odor. And some bucks, not all of them, uh, when, they, when they're there, will start wagging, wagging their rear from side to side. And that, may, that uh, creates a rubbing motion between the tarsal glands inside the hind legs. Now, you gotta do more. You're not gonna get any musk on that ground scrape unless uh, you're a buck, of course. You urinate on your legs, you know, straight down with your legs together like that, and the urine runs through those tufts of hair, that bulging tufts of hair between the hind legs. The urine runs through that, picks up that syrupy liquid containing that musk odor, and carries it to the ground. Now, the, that buck accomplishes two things. He gets his own identifiable, identifiable to other deer, his identifiable urine on there, which has an odor, rank odor of its own, and, and that musk as well. Now he's got musk on there. Now, the musk that's coming out of that initially is pretty potent stuff. Now, here on this map, my, my square mile map here, all these green spots are ground scrapes, and like the antlers, they're at strategic spots. And what's kind of amazing about it, you know, I've been studying whitetails now, habits and behavior, hunting related habits and behavior for since the 1960s. These spots that dominant bucks use to make ground scrapes are commonly used year after year after year. I've known ground scrapes that have been made in the same spot for 40 years. <laughs> So part of it, which means that, you know, those bucks only live, they fuel them a 
uh, survived their seventh year. Gee, a hummingbird just went by. <laughs> okay, a few of them survived their seventh year. So many generations of dominant breeding bucks have been using the same spots year after year. So, and then while during this same period that uh, uh, they're making all these ground scrapes, this two week, two to three week period before breeding begins, they're renewing those scrapes at least once every 24 to 48 hours because they want that stinking musk and their urine there fresh, as, as fresh as possible every day. So there's no doubt in any other buck buying that. That big buck has got, the, this is his, his breeding area and he's there now, you know, he's, he's, he's not somewhere else. Uh, so right now, any younger buck that finds one of those ground scrapes, primarily by odor, is going to be really impressed, you know, like, you know, jeez, I don't want to run into that buck now, because I know how he is. Right now, he's pretty furious. And so, and then here he comes. I'm getting out of here. I'm, I'm not coming back till breeding is over. Most older bucks, that they know that they know this is the way it works. They're going to go. They're going to live off range for places until it's over. But like I said, like what like we're saying about antelopes, some of those bucks, younger ones, especially maybe three and a half or two and a half, are going to smell that doe, that pheromone, and oh, I got to go there <laughs> where that doe is, and so they go and end up in trouble with the buck. So. Uh, so he'll sneak back, but anyway, we the same thing happens, you know, when a big buck sees that that uh, an intruding buck coming back, one of the ones that normally lives on his range or anywhere else for that matter, he's going to be furious. <laughs> now, like I mentioned you know, when we were talking about antelope, if what if that happens, he's going to go if there's a a, a, one of his ground scrapes really nearby, oh, he's going to go march right up to that, and he's going to, boy, he's going to be tossing snow and turf and leaves and everything well to one side, and he's going to get on there and urinate on there and get more musk on there. And then typically they're under overhanging branches. Sometimes they're just next to a small tree, and they rub their musk on that smaller tree next to the uh, ground scrape. But, what if it's on the over one? Well, boy, now there's that buck. I'm going to show him what's going to happen. He'll get up there and just demolish the branches overhanging his, his uh, ground scrape. I he ravaged this little pine tree, busted it off, knocked all these upper branches off. He rubbed a little bit on that one. See, he took them off here. Similarly, over here, more rage rubs. He rubbed on it briefly, probably just swept his antlers back and forth. And he... So it's kind of the same kind of thing, you know. But once breeding begins, like I said, like the third, the fifth of November where I hunt, depending on which square mile you're in, he uh, doesn't have time for this anymore. So when you find one in November, you know, and it's really fresh, that's a dynamite spot for stand hunting. Oh, that is so good. Especially if you're like me and my sons. <laughs> we use our portable stools, you know, with the back straps on them. And we're maybe heading somewhere else and we said, come up to one of those and, oh my God. You know, <laughs> this is exciting. <laughs> yep, we don't talk all loud anyway. That's exciting. That buck is close by and there's another one. And I've seen those other ones quite a few times, you know, smaller bucks. Sometimes it's just a yearling, some little forky. Boy, that buck could see, big buck could see, really flying by. And, and he said, before you had a chance to get your gun up there, gone. I've had that happen, and you wait, wait, and so I must be going back some other way. And then also, he's running back again toward where the doe is. And uh, I've seen that many times over the years. And, and so there's all kinds of things like this going on. But, but anyway, when you find one like that, back off. Just stay 20 yards away. Don't put your scalps up there. Don't put any dough and estrus lure sand on the trees or anything. Just get 
back quickly, downwind or crosswind, where you're well concealed, sit down, get your stool off your back, sit down and wait. Quiet, real quick. Get your head net down, camel head net down over your face, your hands covered with gloves, no bare skin showing, and sit very still. And you probably won't hear anything, and uh, all of a sudden, there he is, right there, 20 yards away. This huge buck. <laughs> And he's on his grouch crib, and he's looking around, or he's rubbing scalps in on that branch, you know. Oh, man, that's exciting. Well, anyway, so, uh, so we've talked a lot about ground scrapes, and in, in, in the previous, my previous seminars, they talked about antler rubs being all over them. Ground scrapes, here again, a big buck can have as many as 30 of them, and they're strategic sites all the way around. One thing that's different though, they don't make ground scrapes in your bedding areas. Might be close by, and uh, so uh, you aren't going to see clusters of ground scrapes in the bedding. So that part is different. Usually they're a little ways away. But one thing to remember, you know, if it's warm or stormy, or if the, the buck knows you're there, like say you're sitting in a tree here waiting for him, if he, if he picked you up the last time he came and backed away without even knowing you knowing and he smelled you or heard you or seen you, you know, always looking in trees nowadays, uh, he might decide from that time, I'm not going there anymore. I'm going to go up here and go this way and I'm not going near that one anymore. And then all of a sudden breeding starts and he stayed away. So you're wasting your time there. And the point is, if you sit in the tree and it's not uh, unseasonably warm and not stormy, and you've been really careful about not walking on this trail to get there, uh, coming from downwind or crosswind to get to your stand site here, uh, been doing everything right, uh, be well concealed, whether you're on the ground or up the tree, you know, being a good balsam like this one, boy, that good way to stay really well concealed in a tree stand. But anyway, uh, if you've been doing everything right, if you don't see that buck within 24 to 48 hours, you know, that's two days of hunting. If you don't see him in two days, he knows you're there. He absolutely knows you're there. And that's why you haven't seen him. So it's time, well, let's go to this one. That's a good idea. At least 100 yards or more, 200 yards away. Go to another one. Freshly renewed. Now, this is, we're talking about the last half of October here, you know, when they're making and renewing ground scrapes every 24 to 48 hours. Go to this one. So, and you're in the ballpark again. Being really careful. Don't get anywhere near the ground scrape. When you see one up there, stay away from it. <laughs> Don't get your trail scent there. Your trail stand lasts four days. You're poisoning that site with your trail scent for four days when you do that. You don't have to put any doe and estrus lure scent in the tree at that ground scrape. It's already, uh, that buck is, it doesn't matter. That no matter what, that buck is going to come back. That's the most important thing to that buck uh, in that period of time is keeping that scent strong, his musk scent yearns strong at that site and a scalp scent on overhanging branches. That's more important than, than anything. He's, he's chased all these bucks out of here. By the end of that, by the end of October, he doesn't want them back. And he's, that those previous ground scrapes that were made by other bucks in there, you'll notice they're not being renewed anymore. If you're sitting there one and it's not being renewed of me, there's a, there's a chance that, see, that was made by a nice buck, maybe he was a four and a half year old, uh, before the big buck chased him out of there. Now he's not coming back anymore. So don't waste more than two days at any ground scrape where you don't see a buck and it's not been renewed, or it's not been renewed. Move to another one, but do it carefully. And don't 
don't rattle antlers, don't use a grunt call, don't use anything. Just sit there and be very quiet downwind or crosswind. And your odds will be much improved for taking a big buck in a ground screen. But it's got to be very recently renewed. If it isn't, it's not a dominant buck ground scrape. It's got to be renewed every within every two days. So keep that in mind. Now, breeding starts. Don't waste your time at ground scrapes anymore. Don't waste your time at ground scrapes anymore. Unless you happen to find one that's been freshly renewed in November. If you do, that's a dynamite spot. Or otherwise, most of these won't be renewed then. Because that buck doesn't have time for that anymore. He's with these does. Hard time for him. He might renew one once in a while. Well, he'll certainly be renewed one if, he get, if one happens to be near and this, another buck shows up. And I talk, told you about why that happens. But, but once, once breeding begins, the very best place to be is where the does feed. And that's where, if the does in heat, that buck's going to be with that doe. If there's snow on the ground and that buck is dry, his tracks, you see his tracks and a big four inch, four inch hoof press, and he's dragging his hoofs from track to track. That's the big dominant buck, and he's smelling a, a doe and estrus and heat, that pheromone being emitted by one maybe in the feeding area, or he's with her. You see the adjoining tracks, three inch tracks of a doe? And so he's with them. And where are they going to be? The most reliable place to find them every morning and every evening is where, the that, doe, where that doe feeds. But only for 24 hours, see? So you can't mess around. You can't be sitting here, oh, day after day after day. When there, if you got that doe out there and she's not in effort, you're not going to see the big buck. You are very unlikely to. So you want to be where the does are in heat. So anyway, um, that's your best area. And especially if you got snow on the ground and you, or if you find doe urine and snow that's spotted with blood in the, in the vicinity of the feeding area or on the edges, boy, that's where you want to be the next day now when the crops are next feeding period, you know. So, uh, keep that in mind. There's not much more to know about ground scrapes. And this is the way it really is. I don't care what anybody tells you. I don't care. It, it, those are not in heat during this frenzy making ground scrapes and antler rubs and antler rubs during the last half of October. Uh, I've heard of, see, I've seen people say, oh, well, they're really rutting when they find all these fresh ground scrapes and ant rubs out in the woods. They're not rutting if you're talking about breeding. They're not breeding. Now, breeding hasn't started yet. Breeding won't start till November. Anyway, when it comes, when you get to November then, stick to feeding areas. Yeah, if you want, if you want to use Doe and Estrus lure sand at feeding areas, use the crosswind setup. I've talked to you about it before. Check back, you know, but you see the list here. We've got one entitled crosswind setup there. So uh, use the crosswind setup only. You don't want your lure scent out in front of you because you don't want your scent going, whether you're in a tree or on the ground, you don't want your scent, the airborne scent, going along with the doe and estrus scent, lure scent. You've got to keep to one side of it. <clears throat> well, anyway, uh, just, to, just to go hit the high spots here, remember now, now you know why the bucks make ground scrapes. And the, the, if you're a bull hunter, that's the season for the bull hunter when, when, when bucks are making and renewing ground scrapes. You know, last half of October, that's the time to be out there. Remember air temperature, how it, how it affects things in stormy weather and the buck knowing you're there. And nine times out of ten, bucks find you before you realize they're near. So don't think you're so good that you can't be you can't be identified by deer no matter what you try to do and what you're wearing what what you're using to minimize odors all those things eventually they get you especially you know when you're hunting close to a trail that's being used regularly used by a big buck 
you're at a place where you're uh, set up for being discovered by a big buck. I mean, everything is, all the things he knows how to do to find a human are, are going on all the time. And you're most vulnerable to being identified where a buck during that period. So, but anyway, during that period, don't stay in one place more than two days. And then once, once breeding begins, that's time to start hunting and feeding her. That's where you're going to see the deer during the day. Oh. Unless you find a very fresh ground scrape made sometime in November while feeding is, uh, breeding is going on. One exception. So there you go. Now you know all about ground scrapes and antler runs. Then the other thing is, you know, when you're out there, you're picking out ground scrapes, you know, during this period, there's going to be quite a few initially. Like, like say here in Minnesota, gee, gee, we had just frost last night, and you go out to, geez, they're all over the place. This is when the guys come running out of the woods, boy, are they rutting, <laughs> but they aren't. But anyway, you find them all over the place, and it, sometimes it might be kind of hard to decide whether this is made by a, a lesser buck, le the one that's not dominant, or the dominant breeding buck. But after, by the time you get, oh, about a week before breeding begins, by that time, most of these other bucks that have been living in there, including the yearlings, will be chased out. Now, the yearlings are kind of a problem for them because they are still dependent on their mothers for direction and leadership in times of danger. So they're going to be sneaking back. So that buck is always looking for these other bucks, and yearlings have got to keep chasing away. The, next, the following year, the yearlings will know better after they've been chased away enough by a big dominant buck. But anyway, when, when, when about a week before breeding begins, you'll find lots of scrapes that haven't been renewed. And the reason they haven't been renewed is because they were made by bucks that were chased out. Those, those bucks are off range somewhere now, hiding. And uh, they'll be back about 17th of November, just like magic, they're back in our, in our hunting area. Because uh, breeding is finally over, or the first of the three breeding phases of the rut is over at that point, and they're back. And no problem, the big buck won't chase them away now anymore. So they're back. But meanwhile, don't spend time at <laughs> ground scrapes that haven't been very recently renewed, like within the last day or two, or maybe hours. Yeah, hours. So anyway, uh, if it was just renewed, he might not be back here for a while. Might be not till tomorrow, but you never know. <laughs> so he might be going by there to get to others that he hadn't been to, so you don't know. Depending on wind direction and things of that sort. And never hunt upwind of a ground screen. Ever. Ever. Now, as far as hunting is concerned, antler rubs are not, a, you just can't depend on it. They don't. Bucks renew them now and then, but not so regularly, so predictably as ground scrapes. Ground scrapes are regularly renewed, and a lot of antler rubs aren't. You know, some a lot of them are just made once, and that's it. Goodbye. I'm all done with you. <laughs> and, and and even if they aren't, it's hard to tell if they've been renewed yet. Mostly, what they do when they come back is put more scalps on them, and that's about it. You can't tell. So I don't like to depend on antler ups as a stand site. But ground scrapes, highly dependable during that last half of October and November if it was just freshly made. Just for that short period, it isn't going to be that way for the whole hunting season. You find one like that in the woods, you don't spend the rest of the hunting season there. That's only good for today and maybe half of tomorrow and that's it. Okay? Well, there you go, guys. Well, I, this has my big <laughs> been my one big chance since the coronavirus got a hold of us, and and uh, it's been kind of fun to come back and talk about these things before. You see, I haven't slowed down <laughs> not a bit. So 
anyway I don't know when I'll be able to do this again but when it happens uh, you'll be notified if you're you know if you've subscribed you're going to be notified immediately and Dr. Norberg just just submitted a new one and you'll be able to see it right away so with that uh, thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe you know push the button doesn't cost anything <laughs> But it's important for my future on YouTube, so I want you to keep doing that. And also press that thumbs up button as well. With that, thanks again. We'll see you again soon. Hopefully. <laughs> Be sure to visit my website. Here's the link. Here you'll find links to my blog posts, my Twitter account, my YouTube account, my Amazon store with links to my ebooks. My son's eBay store, a money saver if you're ordering from Canada or other countries. My website bookstore and much more.